Let's do it. Do it now. Do it now. Now get to the chopper. Let's let's stream. Yeah, let's yeah, communicate to everybody on the stream that we are. Uh, uh, we are streaming. In doing our worst Arnold Schwarzenegger impressions. <laughs> yeah. I we, are true, we, are, we are true children of the age. I still yeah, press the uh, button. Yeah. <laughs> uh, impressions. Mm. This is um, this is us painting a model. Here's my face. There's Sherwin's face. <laughs> I mean, also ultimately, let's be realistic. You're going to be doing all the work here. I'm mostly just here to chat and generally uh, talk absolute nonsense. I'm the engine. You're the good looks. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. That's I might go about my big beard. I must admit, watching the gorilla video, um, I, I really miss my huge, enormous, massive beard. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I think you're better off like like manscaped a little bit. I preferred it when you had short hair as well, but then I'm biased. Right. Well, I mean, there is this. I I don't know. Sorry, I'm just just getting some bits and pieces. Apparently, there's something, some technical issues or something. I'm being told, but it might just be that. Right. Yeah. Okay. It, it seems absolutely fine. I think. Um. I think our, our, our marketing team is just catching up to the fact that we've hit the. We're actually on time. <laughs> no, like, that, that's that, that's like, the technical issues. Wait, what? How is this yeah. even possible? Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we are painting a shell walker today, mm. and uh, I'm. Conscious that um, for many people who who might watch this, this might be one of the first minis that they paint ever, or or indeed in a very long time. Um, so I'm going to try and use some really simple techniques, and what we're looking to do is to get something uh, close to this guy um, in about an hour ish. Mm. Um, I realised that like um, when I looked at the artwork, because there was a, there was a little bit of kind of weathering and grime in the artwork, and I tend to be a little bit more gritty and grimy, so um, um, it kind of worked out all right. So what have I done to prep the model? I'm going to keep it off to one side. So the model comes pre-assembled, comes on its fantastic hard plastic base. Uh, what I did do is got a little bit of uh, uh, super glue, I think I used, or you can use PVA glue. I just used super glue because it was the nearest sticky stuff to hand. Um, dabbled a little bit on the base, and then I poured a bit of sand on it and uh, let that dry off. Uh, so that gave it a little bit of texture, and I'm going to try and recreate that sort of deserty base um, like you get in the in the game itself. Um, and then what I did is I actually sprayed it um, a, a black. Now I use an airbrush because it gives me a little bit more control. Um, but a lot of people probably won't have access to an airbrush. So you can just use a normal can of uh, black spray uh, that you can get from any hobby store. Um, Vallejo do one, Games Workshop do one, uh, Army Painter do one amongst others. Um, or if you have a um, like a car body uh, supplier, so like in the UK we have a store called Halfords uh, that does all sort of motoring spares and parts but also does um, rattle cans of different paint. Car body primer, absolutely perfect. And one of the things that's uh, important, this is why I use an airbrush, is, is the nozzle and the fineness of the spray. So a car body spray will actually be fine enough to not obscure the detail. Now if you've never done this before, less is more. Uh, you can always add another layer of paint, but it's very, very, very difficult uh, to take layers of paint away. Uh, a bit like a haircut. Um, so we can give it a light dusting with black, um, and that basically, um, uh, for those of you who don't know, primer then uh, chemically bonds with the surface of a mini. Um, you are supposed to wash the mini. I don't generally um, because I am uh, lazy. Um, but if you give the, uh, the mini a wash, make sure it's dry, give it a spray with black. Um, two or three even light coats is way better than one thick coat. Don't hold it too close, otherwise it will run. Don't hold it too far away, otherwise uh, the paint will be dry by the time it hits the surface of the mini and you'll end up with like a little bit of a sandy texture. So generally about six inches, eight inches away, um, just a light spray. Let it dry completely. Um, and what I've then done is taken a white spray and applied something that's called a zenithal shade, which is a technical term for um, showing the lighter areas that are closer to the sun. So when we paint a mini, we imagine that the sun or the or the light source generally is directly above the model. So if you look underneath the model, it's darker, and if you look on top of the model, it's lighter. 
So what we do is we actually hold the model and we spray at it from an angle. Uh, so we just go all the way around uh, and give it a light dusting with some with some white. Uh, and that will also help show you where the highlights should go on your mini. Um, but also it will give you a tonal base um, coat that will affect the way um, the paint actually behaves. So if you take this surface here where it's darker in the corner and lighter over here, if I paint the same color paint over that, the paint that's on the dark surface will appear to be um, chromatically different and, and also in terms of its brightness value uh, compared to the paint that went over the, over the white spot. What I have done here is used a slightly advanced technique up on the, um, the, cent uh, the, the feature of this uh, particular model which is obviously the big shell um, and this is uh, uh, I think it's called is it um, oh, it's like modulating the surface I think uh, and it comes from like uh, military model terms I don't know if you've heard of that showing but essentially um, what you can get confused with is if you try and go for a true light source you would end up with this surface all white and this surface would be uh, a little bit of white, uh, a little bit sort of mid-tone, and then this surface will be black. But that actually ends up looking really weird. So what they discovered when they painted tanks back in uh, sort of like the military modeling sort of days was if you modulate the surface, and what you want to do is try and get a dark edge next to a light edge. And the easiest way to do that is to hold the model. And if I hold it to the camera, if you see when I rotate this to this point, if I'm spraying from this direction, there's no way on God's earth whether that any paint can actually get onto this side of the surface. So rotate it around, give it a light light little spray in the top right corner, rotate around, light little spray in the top corner, same again, same again, same again, same again, and you're done. And that gives you this wonderful modulated behavior which makes the surface of the Mini look interesting. Have you heard of that before, mate? Uh, strangely, yes, actually. When, um, if you recall a little while back, I think we were in Manchester and we were looking at some dry brushes uh, for using, like, in, and actually doing shading via dry brushes. Yeah. Do you remember? I think Byron went through this stuff with us. Yes, he did, yeah. And I remember, I remember reading about it a bit then uh, when I was, came away from that. Um, however, just for future reference, anybody who is actually painting tanks, please don't try to lift them up like a model and tilt them to size. You will give yourself a hernia. Um, that's not advised unless you are literally the world's strongest man, Bluff Plus. <laughs> so one last thing, and then I will start um, actually getting some paint on because the first stage is always the work bit that takes a little bit of time. Um, uh, I then gave it a spray with a satin um, varnish. And the satin varnish does two things. It seals the surface of the paint uh, of, the, of the base coat, uh, but it also smooths it out. Now, a shiny surface is smoother than a than a than a dull surface. Um, it's literally the property of the material that makes uh, a dull surface um, is it, it, it's rough, so it actually diffuses the light that reflects off of it. Where the shiny surface is um, is basically smooth. So, uh, because we're going to be using a lot of washes, um, then uh, it actually flows a lot more easily. So commonly easy to get hold of paints so we're just going to use uh, some paints from the uh, Citadel uh, color range the contrast paints you can get them in any GW store or in a hobby store um, I'm going to use some um, uh, just standard paints uh, so these are Reaper Master series um, over here I just pick these for the colors uh, these are just basic acrylic paints water soluble acrylic paints I've got a black, I've got a white, uh, I've got a brown, and I've got a yellow, and I've got a, like a powdery baby blue um, for the carapace. And that should probably do me, I think. So, uh, Sorry, just quickly to jump in. Um, there are very important questions in the chat. Okay, I'm going to start uh, but, because otherwise this is... Um, oh yeah, of course, yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say the most important question of which is um, whether I should grow my huge beard back which used to be a hot to bake point topic. But secondly is where did you get your awesome mug? Uh, I stole that off of uh, Angel Heraldes. Um, <laughs> he was, uh, <laughs> he did some painting on a Steamforged uh, booth at uh, Salute. And I um, uh, when he wasn't looking, I just stole it. And he was kind of like, where's my mug gone? I'm like, I don't know, bro. It's disappeared somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is, a, this is a, an actual Angel Heraldes mug um, stolen from the man himself. Um, so yeah, uh, but I think you know it's nice, it's nice, nice messaging on there, right? So yeah. I'm using um, contrast um, uh, apothecary white, 
uh, and this is basically going to give ourselves a surface uh, color um, and I am going to apply, apply that quite liberally and what this is doing is basically going to start defining the white but more more importantly it's going to start defining the uh, the shades where they go so they're just going to put this on quite liberally um, and what I'm looking to do is use it neat from the pot and I'm not letting it go on too thick because then it will take forever to uh, dry. Um, what I'm doing is just basically letting it run. And one of the phrases that you'll hear me talking about an awful lot in this video is capillary action. And that for me is the way that you can paint minis really quickly and really accurately. And capillary action is basically uh, a fluid behavior. Um, fluid will want to run into a small space i guess is that right mm. so it's like how plants yeah. do all their stuff isn't it mm. there you see i was listening in biology all those years ago <laughs> i don't think i had biology class when i was at school they just covered it all in humanities oh, which God. is uh which is my contribution to this conversation so far you have all the facts and i've literally just got anecdotal memories of being you know young being younger than I am, yeah, I, I was yeah. I was the first year that did GCSEs. Wow. Yeah, right. Do they um, do GCSEs still? Answers on the back of a folk, postcard, folks. I think so. Right, so I'm not whacking on loads of paint. Um, sure, my hands not getting in the way. Uh, I'm also working from light to dark. Contrast paints um, have uh, a really strong pigment. Um, so it's hard if, to cover a dark color with a light color. So we're just going to get all this white done. And um, then we're going to go over and do uh, the black. It doesn't matter too much because we're going to be putting black over this if we're accurate or not. Okay. The sooner we do this. The other thing uh, to bear in mind with contrast paints, they've been out about a year now, so there's um, there was a flurry of videos that came out when they first came out, and people didn't really know um, what they were doing with them. There's a load of videos out now with where people have had some time with, with these paints, and there's some pretty cool things you can do, but what you don't want to do is overwork it. So it's far better, if you think you've made a mistake, is to take your brush off the model, and uh, to just let it dry and then see what the damage is. If you keep working it, I guarantee you, you will do more damage. And if you end up with like water rings and all that kind of stuff and scratches in the actual paint as it's drying, it's far harder to actually uh, hide that stuff than, than it is to just paint over a smooth surface. Yeah, it's an age old thing, isn't it? If you're trying to do kind of, if you're trying to paint something and you're really not sure it's coming through or whatever else, don't keep layering paint on it while it's wet, because otherwise you'll just end up with something that just loses all detail yeah. and looks super, super messy. Just know to step back, go make a cup of tea in this sort of weather, it'll dry in no time or whatever, and then um, just come back to it then. We were talking about it um, just before we started, weren't we? Which is, you know, mm. it's a lot of painting is just confidence to kind of just let something mm. take take shape um and, and almost almost outside of your control but sometimes you'll put like something on and you think oh my god that looks so bright why why yeah. is that like that um yeah in the words of um also in the words of bob ross you know you don't there are no uh was it there are no mistakes there's happy little accidents like <laughs> you can you, you can turn it painting is really about something where you can turn something that looks like you're terrified you've made absolute garbage you can really turn into a strength somewhere along the way if you want on this model, if you've made if you've had an area that you really weren't happy with, you could happily turn it into battle damage or something along those lines and instantly fix it. Or just have something interesting and creative come out of it. Right, so that's the most boring bit out of the way. So uh, we probably won't need to come back to that stuff. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab um, some yellow and this and don't do this at home, uh, because this is where mm. we can get uh, prone to disaster. Um, but I'm going to try and uh, just speed things up a little bit by um, trying to carefully paint some of the details. So I'm going in on this uh, with a little bit less paint and I'm just letting the brush capillary reaction just pull the paint off and it just 
flows into the edges. You see, I'm not really taking oh. that much effort to to line it up. You don't really have to. You just don't press too hard, and the bristles on the brush will do um, your job for you. And the paint will just flow off into these little crevices and give you dead straight lines. See that? It took no effort at all, right? No, not so much. Uh, this, there's a question in the chat about how are you going to paint the belly of the shell walker? Because uh, it doesn't look like it's terribly easy access. Yes. So, um, uh, depending on what school of thought you come from, uh, I am on the, if I can't get a brush to it, I'm highly unlikely to be able to see it. Therefore, I'm not too worried if it's just black. So, um, make sure you've got uh, like a nice black undercoat and um, uh, basically don't worry about it too much. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. If, if you've got, if you can match exactly like what you said when you're sort of shading it and it looks like that's where the sun's hitting it and gives you a highlight. So, if you can imagine the underbelly of that, of the shell, of the shell walker, you're simply not going to see whatsoever. So, it actually would be very, very dark underneath there. Yeah. So, it actually almost looks quite natural that way. Yeah. Um, otherwise, uh, I can guarantee you, having painted many, many uh, tanks and things over the years, the other option you have is lots of very awkward holding the model upside down, squinting and trying to push a brush in somewhere to try and paint things. Yeah, that's uh, that's not so fun at all. No, um, not so much. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm painting these to play um, board games with. Uh, if I was painting these for a competition, then I would take the model off the base and, and paint it, um, because competition you will need to cover every surface. But when you're painting for... Uh, uh, a board game uh, or a miniatures game you don't really need to worry about it too much oh. um, unless you go for best painted kind of awards and if you are then you probably know way more about painting than I do <laughs> um, I'm just going to quickly throw in there um, one nice shout out to see one of some of the Resident Evil crew in the chats Yay! Um, awesome guys thank you for turning up and uh, just a quick thing, uh, they want to see whether there's some Resident Evil painting on stream. We've actually got some uh, from a little while back where you did a world supply of zombies in about an hour, if memory serves. Uh, what did I do? Is it 18 models in an hour and a half? Yeah, something like that. They're yeah. the sort of zombies. Uh, have a look in our uh, video history, Green Man. Uh, you should be able to find them all in there. For sure. Okay. So I'm just letting the, uh, again, like the, letting the capillary reaction pull it off. I'm not really stressing too hard about getting a uh, a super straight surface and if you do end up putting a little bit too much paint on dry your brush off by using kitchen towel and not licking it um, and you can pull it away and that's fine cool uh, also um, slight technical issue I'm just quickly told uh, we knew there'd be one bug bear sooner or later hiding in there yeah uh, apologies that our um our late our late pledge link goes to re3 apparently <laughs> uh, oh, so wow. we knew there'd be something in there sorry guys i'm sure um, wendy will dive on that and fix that for us will she i'm fairly sure it's actually wendy will fix that one um or at least shout hours tomorrow morning in the cold live day but um was it our fault? yes uh, i think we probably need to update the description but who knows Anyway, so um, the other way you can access this, obviously, guys, um, is click on uh, type, go into any uh, Google search engine or any search engine of your choice. HFDKS will get you the Horizon Zero Dawn Kickstarter, and there's a button on there you can push. Beautiful. So uh, easily, easily fixed. And also check out RE3, it's pretty cool. Okay, so uh, black contrast. So again, probably why wise, wise people would wait until uh, everything had dried off, but we are not those people. So um, <laughs> we are. Uh, so when you're doing this at home, you you obviously don't have to look around the side of a uh, camera, and you can make sure that you take your time and let everything dry off properly before you you soldier on. But um, we like to live dangerously. Okay. Well, also, you have a, you have very limited time to actually paint these models. Uh, true. I have less time to paint than I would like. Okay, so again, just going to come through, let the capillary action pull the paint. I'm not trying to push it in. I'm just letting it go, and the, and the paint just flows off. And all I'm doing is using the tip of the brush to just coax it into place. And there you go. The paint does what I want it to do. Uh, other thing that is worth looking at is I tend to um, use my, my brush goes in the same line, and I move, I move the model around. So if I want to paint a straight line, I'm moving the model around, I'm moving the model around like that. So my hand doesn't actually move other than just a, in a completely controlled up and down 
that makes sense go around there like that lovely and then uh the rest of this is actually quite dark isn't it i think yeah that's all right i've got a palette here but because we're painting with contrast paints a lot of this stuff is just coming straight out of the um straight out of the pot because they come sort of ready mixed with the right kind of oh. consistency and everything like that okay slap it on any mistakes we can fix later on but the less mistakes you do the faster you get at painting I often get asked um, how do I paint models so quickly and it is Generally, the secret is don't make mistakes. Because make mis as, mistakes like slows you down. As a side note, that's very true. As a side note, if you have Xenophore highlighted, uh, sorry, Xenophore undercoated as Matt has done, um, you can actually, I'm going to cause a small earthquake while I look around for the right color to make sure I've got it. You can get back to that color pretty well with um, some off one gray uh, layer color. So if, oh, you right, go, okay. if you go if you go over a little bit, um, a dash of that will actually bring you back to the Xenophil highlight sort of grey really really quickly. So um, that's a good one for kind of uh, wanting to sort of you know get you a nice even tone back. Okay, so this is probably the most awkward and probably least interesting bit, but we'll <laughs> we'll just kind of get some some black in here. We nearly a disaster there. I got all kind of. You tried to test with the author on grave uh, thing I mentioned. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't want to do that. Okay, again, take your time on this. Um, I am going quite quickly. Probably missing a few bits, but it's fine. Another reason why, when we go in and do the, like the weathering stage, uh, we can hide a multitude of sins. Oh, this is still wet ground here with the with the apothecary wall. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a disaster. Okay. Just pulling the brush down again. Let the capillary action pull it in. To the corner. Gives me a dead straight line. Smooth it round. That was a brilliant example of how it works. Really don't need a steady hand. I've painted with like proper DTs before and it just doesn't matter. Um... Uh, in terms of paintbrush that I'm using, uh, this is a Red Grass Games paintbrush, but uh, Windsor and Newton do some uh, pretty wicked brushes. Oh. Um, and uh, you can also Raphael. So uh, Windsor and Newton miniature series. Um, no, that's a lie. Go for the series seven. Don't go for the miniature series. Uh, the miniature series is uh, is not a handy brush, even though it is named miniature. Um, it will not help you paint miniatures. Um, because the um, the belly of the brush isn't big enough to hold enough paint, so the paint oh, then dries. Yeah. Interesting. More R and D required. Yeah, like um, let me see if I could, I've got an old one here. Oh, Wendy's Wendy's resort to Gorilla Tactics. Uh, so, that, so that's your... like um, that's a small brush, and that's a same size brush. But if you look. The bristles are much larger on this, so the belly is the big fat bit of the brush. That's what holds all your uh, holds yeah. all your paint while yeah. you're actually painting. What's Wendy up to? Uh, she's Gorilla Tactics. She's sending you a thunder drawing in the post, so we have to paint it now. Oh, sweet. Okay. That's <laughs> that's a that's a thing. That's I the challenge. Mind. I don't mind receiving. Might, might yeah might need to uh, have a little bit longer than an hour stream though to try and get it done. Challenge accepted. Yeah, probably a probably a bit more than an hour. Right. Uh, I think there's a flat panel on top of here. So, so this Templar black is lovely because it um, you can use it as uh, instead of a metallic, um, or you can use it in just as a straight up black. Black's a hard color to paint. Even when you've been painting for years and years, black still kind of messes with your head about how to paint it properly. Mm. Um, I think it's mostly I think it's mostly the shading is the bit that sort of throws people off. Yeah, it's big. It's basically because 
depends on the type of black surface that you want oh. to create. So if you want to create a shiny surface, then all of the uh, highlights need to be really close together. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're creating a flat surface, then um, the highlights can be a little bit more spread out. All right, I've got most of the black bits. I probably so going back to that earlier question, you can see I'm not really stressing too hard about getting in inside here. Most people aren't going to be able to see that. They're going to be focused on the other bits and pieces. Um, I'm going to do oh. around here. I need to do his kind of face grill thing and the guns. Right, this is the most boring part about the uh, paint job. So okay, I will uh, entertain you meanwhile by uh, reminding you, apparently, Wendy just very helpfully chimed in. I think you may have promised the first funder draw you paint to Roy. I can do that. So uh, I'm afraid you you have to send two funder draws through the post, Wendy. That is That's the true. obvious answer there. I'm sure Roy would appreciate it. I'm sure Roy could paint a better miniature than I could. Yeah. Roy actually appears in our um in the trailer video for the board game. It does. Which I was lo which I was lovely which I was lovely to see. Right. That'll do for that. Okay, so let's uh let's go on to actually putting a little bit of paint on while that's drying. So I'm gonna grab some of this ashen blue and uh, I'm gonna pull this over. So this is uh this is a wet palette. You can use uh, a wet palette or um which is basically like a, a membrane uh with some water in a, in a sponge underneath um, or you can uh, just use a like a saucer or something the wet palette just extends the drying time of the uh, of the paint so we've got a little bit more time to play with uh, but yeah, what we're gonna... tra sorry go on Matt I was just, just going to say the bit we're trying to paint is the um, is the triangular kind of carapacey bit hmm. yeah it's pretty straightforward to make a wet palette um, if you feel confident enough in doing it there's, I'm sure there's 101 different guides on uh, online about how to do it um, but baking paper is normally the thing, I think. Yeah, and then you can just, uh, do it. just don't get the waxy kind. Right, so yeah. look how much paint I've got on my brush. So whilst I was slobbing it on, the whole brush got kind of drenched. I cleaned my brush off, and now I'm just making sure I'm getting in the tip. And you can always use a sidey hand to kind of reshape your tip. And again, going back to what we're saying about pulling in a straight line, I'm going to line myself up. I'm going to go from one corner to the other, and I'm just going to pull a straight line. And then while the paint's still wet, I'm just going to smooth that. Out. Simple, right? Mm. Tell you, like everyone says, oh, how do you do all this stuff? It's like it's literally just tricks. It's not skill. Mm. Right, so I'm lining up here and I'm making sure that I'm gonna pull down in a straight line. I'm gonna press lightly, and then while it's still wet, I'm just gonna make sure that the surface is smooth. I'm not pressing hard at all, letting the paint come off the surface of the brush. Job done. Mm -hmm. uh, and then going from this way, I'm going to do this in stages. So it's going to be here, um, sir. and then mm -hmm. there, like that, and then down here. That, and here. that we got one more no we don't we've got two more bits to go uh, this is the important one because this is the one that you can really see so let's pull this up here what's important when you're painting um, uh, like this it's a bit like when you're sawing a piece of wood you should never put your saw on the saw mark you put your saw oh. to the side of the saw mark so I want this to come come from point to point. So I move my brush one width over and then I pull down next to the line. Uh, and that means that when the brush sort of uh, splays out a little bit, which is inevitable, then um, it doesn't go over the line. And you see a lot of people who are trying to do sort of freehand straight lines that they end up uh, getting themselves into all sorts of bother. Mm. That looks all right, doesn't it? I think it looks fairly respectable, Matt. I mean, no, I'm joking. It looks amazing. So um, we'll go back in quickly and do a second coat. Now, this is the important bit. I like to not try and go over the exact same line. I like to go one 
like half a mil inside and leave a little bit of that line and for some reason that's that seems to give the sensation of a of a straighter line uh, to mm. my eye so i'm just going to come in just a little bit i'm just going to paint near the line but not actually on it and that looks like a dead straight line but it's got mm. like it's got it's just a little bit more natural um mm. for some reason i don't i wish i could tell you like a fancy dancy way reason why but i don't know comments below i guess if if you kind of happen to know why that is the case but yeah i've always done that with my straight lines never try and go completely over cool uh these ones at the back i'm less worried about they're not really kind of key features are they well it's getting yeah especially when there's bits obscuring them as well yeah okay so so far, what we've done is we've applied a wash and uh, we've drawn straight lines. So there is no reason, as I said, that you can't do this. Even right. if you've never painted a mini before, it's just take your time, don't rush it. Okay. Yeah, that's actually a really good important thing. Um, most important, the best thing about painting miniatures, honestly, is your own expression. It doesn't matter, you know, whether you produce the most amazing piece of model ever or whether it's something where it looks where you feel it looks like a beginner's piece. The whole point is expression and it's telling a journey of what it is. Trust me, if you, if you are learning to paint, you will very much look fondly back on those old models you painted the first time around and kind of smile at them in years to come. Um, just if nothing else, knowing how far you've come along or whatever else. Yeah. And a lot part of it is, you know, it's just simple techniques. Don't try to rush anything just to, at your own pace. It's quite a really relaxing thing, painting. Basically, it's, it's just a heck of a lot of fun. Mm. Um, right, I think uh, I kind of want to do some dry brushing, but I'm slightly nervous that some of these things are uh, still a bit wet. Mm. Um, Robots, is it? Well, do you have any areas you can do, or is it still mostly? Yeah, we'll try and we'll, we'll, let's talk about dry brushing, and then that'll give us a little bit of for um, a little bit <laughs> of time. So, you can buy super duper dry brush brushes, right? These are uh, specially made. Um, this brand is uh, Artus Opus, but there is uh, Rosemary & Co. There's all sorts of uh, Games Workshop do dry brushes. Um, and they are basically a night that they're like a combination of soft, um, but 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 have a stiffness to them. So um, you can, uh, for those of you who wear makeup, um, I got this from Superdrug in, in England. It's like Boots the Chemist. It's like a drugstore, basically. And I, I don't really, I'm not really an expert on makeup. Is this like a blusher brush or something? Or is it eyeshadowy brush? Something like that. It's basically a soft brush um, that's got a little bit of stiffness to it, uh, but it is quite soft. So that's the kind of brush that we're going to use for this. And we're just going to grab a little bit of kitchen towel. And then what we are going to do is we're going to grab uh, a little bit of paint. So this is uh, a very old pot of, um, I think it's, white or something um from reaper very very old yeah it's quite old isn't it um so yeah just just any old white that you want whack a load onto the uh onto your um palette and then we're just going to grab uh and the reason i like to um dry brush from a wet palette which is a bit weird but you can actually dampen the bristles from the wet palette so this is slightly um picking up some moisture from from underneath and then I can just grab a little bit of paint like that. And then from there, I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to just basically get just get a load of it off. And then you can test it on the back of your finger. And then what we're trying to do is replicate the light. So we're bringing it down like that. And it's going to start picking up like the little edges you should be able to start seeing them popping a little bit more on the, on yeah. the camera yeah moment, moment of truth to see whether he, uh, the wetness of the washes at all has uh, done this definitely yeah. take more time before driving, jumping into dry brushing at home kids uh, please <laughs> do yeah uh, <laughs> but in other news it's an eyeshadow brush I'm uh, informed is that an eyeshadow brush alright I mean I'm, I'm not an expert in, in makeup but um, I just went in and bought if you go in and ask them for a dry brushing brush, I'm pretty sure they won't know what you're talking about. Yeah, look at you like a lunatic. Yeah. So you can see quite quickly that you can build this up. Now, the good thing about this technique is uh, as long as you dry it off and keep the bristles of your brush um, damp, 
uh, then it won't go all powdery. Uh, it will just kind of build up in like a nice smooth layer. So you can see it kind of getting a nice bit of contrast already. Uh, yeah, that is a crucial thing with dry brushing is that if you you know if you're doing it too, too uh, you brush bristles too dry because you'll end up with a really chalky kind of effect on your model. Yeah. Right, so uh, we're going to pull this down here. We're going to go over the blue and the white as well because it doesn't matter. We're going to start looking to kind of capture all the edges. I'm going to catch the tops of these uh, yellow bits and uh, catching a little bit of uh, black. Hooray for me. So <laughs> let's call that, um, that's a foreshadowing of the weathering that I'm going to do. <laughs> Weathering, also known as uh, fixing things. Fixing, yeah. Okay, so we're just... Oh, look at that. Don't do this at home. Mm. Honestly, wait until everything's dried and you won't be uh, causing yourselves all kinds of mischief. Right. I'm just going to focus on these bits here because they should be uh, pretty much dry. So I'm just pulling it as as um, perpendicular as I can to the surface because um, I just want to capture the edges. Really, the uh, oh. the more the edges are. Yeah. To explain how the principle behind dry brushing works, which um, is is you're leaving so much pigment on because you're wiping most of the paint off the brush, you're only leaving the pigment actually on the rest of the brush tips. So as you go over this, it's just literally staying just as that on the raised edges. Yeah, and nothing, nothing's going into the recesses, which then illuminates it that way. Yeah, exactly that. So it's probably the best example I can do this on here. So I'm just going to pull it across this aerial, and you can see it's just kind of caught that edge. Hmm. And then I can build it up if I want, like a, a, a particularly bright spot like that. Hmm. Um. So I'm just going to go around, kind of get all these. And also really easy to fix everybody if you do too much of this and you decide you're not too happy with it, it will wash. Super, super easy to yeah, fix. Yeah, wash just resets the clock and then off you go again. So, uh, and in actual fact, a lot of the time if you do dry brush and then apply a little bit of a wash over the top, often called a glaze, um, hmm. that can actually uh, remove any chalkiness and, and smooth your highlights in. Hmm. Okay, so that's probably about half the dry brushing I'd like to do but let's soldier on mm -hmm. I don't think that looks too uh, too shabby actually no it looks fairly respectable again it, it's just purely because obviously the way for paint's dry isn't it yeah so I'm just going to go in so the, the feature of this model is, is definitely the carapace so that's where we want to kind of capture people's attention I'm mm -hmm. just going to make sure we've got some highlights there so I'm going to go back to my, uh, my main brush so this is the first time I'm going to use a technique that might be a bit tricky so we're getting a little bit of white paint on, not a lot, and then I'm just making sure that it's wet enough to flow off, okay, and then test it on my finger, and now um, I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to put it on the, uh, on the very edge, and I'm not going to press down hard at all, and I'm just going to pull it up, so I've got a nice bright line, same like that, notice how I'm not Moving oh. the uh, moving the, uh, the the brush is just going backwards and forwards, and I'm just moving the model around. I'm able to kind of just give it some of these sort of sharper oh. edge highlights. And these these kind of just really make it feel like it's been painted rather than dry brush, which is a bit bit of a weird thing to say, but. Oh just a, a stronger application so you can see they've got a, like a lot more kind of oomph to them uh -huh. and we can do them on the top here as well so if you this if you're really careful you can catch where the um where the where the light would kind of capture the the edges of these features as a side note definitely do um whilst doing this definitely uh do what match did there which is pause every so often and just look at the overall model it's one of these techniques which is very easy to kind of go over the top on this and then not and sort of lose your bearing on how much of it you've done always or sort of stop to evaluate as you go through yeah um less is often more with painting and it's definitely one of those um things that the, the more you paint the more you you 
kind of know what's uh -huh. what's enough and what's not enough. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Should just pause every now and then. Uh -huh. So I'm just using the exact same technique to kind of like this is how you paint Space Marines, by the way. It's just like that, pretty easy. Um, Space Marines is that really easy challenge, uh, that really thing where it's really easy to paint them. Well, I always find it impossible to paint them really well. Right. I think they've been designed that way, to be fair. Yeah, I think you're possibly right. So just, um, you can see, like, the brush, it's not particularly mm. good for the brush. My brush is really not liking this at all, but whatever, it's a brush. So I'm just pulling the, uh, the edges of the teeth just to give it a little bit of edge highlighting, and that should be that. I'm just going to quickly jump into the uh, into the comments. Uh, I think there's some discussion going on about the different properties of contrast paints and layers and washes and so on. So um, uh, people who are kind of looking at this, just wait for a second for it to load for me, and then I'll have a look. Okay. Because I think uh, Paul Wendy's not 100% au fait with painting. Right, that's fine. So uh, just while you're doing that, I'm grabbing a little bit of yellow. Um, now, yellow comes out of the pot um, quite thin. So uh, in terms of uh, the, the, like, the pigment, um, so you can put a dab of white into it and that basically um, makes it less transparent and therefore has better coverage. Mm. Just lightens it up a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to kind of clean that off my brush, give myself a tip. And then again, um, I'm going to use the same technique, just pulling down mm. and I'm going to try and paint a, um, a triangle. So just using the very tip of the brush. Uh, so just quickly while you're doing that, uh, unless you have some points you want to add to that as we go along. No, it's fine. Uh, it basically seems to be around um, contrast paints, whether they are layers or base coats, um, or what they're considered as. What's really interesting here is that, um, and when you would use washes, what's really interesting with contrast paints is that I think you can happily use them as a base coat, or you can happily use them even as a wash if you want to do. But the best thing I've ever seen anyone doing with contrast paints is just being really inventive with them. To be honest, you can almost do them for anything. I know I've been using them on a whole bunch of old Wallmaster models for non-metallic metals, for example. Yeah. Um, they're just, they are a very, very versatile paint, which I think is really about experimenting and finding out the best way they work for you. And that even goes down to the individual colors as well. Yeah, some, I, I do not get on with some colors, but um, but I'll tell you, the thing that I like doing is I like, um, I mix them 50-50 with, um, uh, with my washes. So like with Agrex Earthshade, and then you put a, a contrast paint in, gives it a, a, a huge amount of, uh, of extra richness, mm. um, which is, is, is quite nice, actually. You dilute the magic potion. Okay, fair enough. Oh, we're Phil in the chat. Hey, Phil. Really awesome to see you, my friend. Uh, Phil, our, um, our volunteer guy. He oh, goes cool. and does a whole bunch of different stuff. All right, so I've done some triangles on the front. Hopefully you can see them on the camera. Um, there's some light blue ones, so I'm just going to grab a bit of this blue, stick that over there, grab a bit of the white, give myself a light blue. Do Let's check the, whether it needs a tiny little drop of water, just to give it a bit of flow. When you're doing freehand, um, you need the paint to flow a little bit. Huh. Um, so yeah, your thumbs are like a good, like a John Wick on your on your on your hand. So we're just going to match these triangles up. So just lightly pull in straight line, straight line, straight line. Once I've got that, then I can just kind of color that in. I'm really just using the tip of the brush there. So this is possibly the most tricky part about this whole whole paint job. Mm. So like that. But let's let's um, let's make a deliberate mistake. Okay, so I'm not super happy with that first line. Uh, that's fine. I'm not going to panic. I'm just going to let that dry off, and I'm going to finish this one here. Myself a little triangle. Uh, side note to everybody, we absolutely are talking about the GW contrast paints when we say that, which is actually a range that Games Workshop do. And I'm going to go back to my original colour, and I'm just going to paint in here to give this a sharper 
Uh. Dark Ryan again. Low stress. Job done. Alright, so that's that. Alright, now what we want to do is grab a little bit of the yellow. Let's start catching some of these uh, little features. So again, side of the brush. Um, and I'm just going to basically catch some of these raised surfaces. This is something that uh, Russ and I do uh, when we're sculpting. So Russ is our lead sculptor. We have a wonderful sculpting team. Um, and we actually Russ, made a whole bunch of these models. They certainly did. Uh, and Russ and I spend an awful lot of time thinking about what techniques are you going to use to paint these models and making sure that we then uh, put the detail into the sculpt. Uh, and then once oh. it goes into the production team, who liaise with the factory, making sure that these areas that are important uh, for anyone who wants to paint the mini, uh, that oh. these areas are maintained. So there's oh. quite a lot of attention to detail required um, for this. Mm, I actually remember the uh, the first time, the first model we made was the Stormbird, I believe, uh, is that Russ made uh, for this particular project anyway. Was it the first? Why did we pick the Stormbird as the first model? I don't remember that. Uh, well, I, I say that. I thought it was I the Thunder Thunder Thunder. So the, the Stormbird was the first one he showed me and started working on. And I think he very quickly came around to the conclusion that the best route to do was actually the Thunder Jaw because the Stormbird was going to be in his work, in his, in his words, and I won't use expletives, but something, something, something massive. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> at that point, he kind of changed his mind and decided to go for the equally massive thunder jaw. <laughs> um, right, it's, I'm going a little bit off canon, but these arms um, are a little bit on the. They need something interesting, so I'm just going to give these a bit of a blue. Um, and I don't know if that's completely faithful, but I feel like they just need a, a little bit of color splash there to make them a little bit more interesting and this, yeah, you know, this, this is, is the beauty of, of painting is you can look yeah. at something and and you know make your mind up as to what's going to make it work so uh, as um, shell walkers appear in downtown essex in the horizon zero dawn universe uh, they have blue arms everybody there you go you heard it here first right so um what's the next thing that we're going to do so the next thing we're going to do is Let's do a little bit of weathering. Mm. So, in your Horizon Zero Dawn box, you will have one of these. Don't throw this away. This is a very important um, thing. Rip a little bit of uh, a bit of it off, and uh, grab yourself a dark brown colour, ideally, um, and stick that on your uh, on your palette over here. And then we are going to need our kitchen towel. And you grab this and you basically just fold it in your pocket in your fingers so you've got like a rounded sort of surface grab a little bit of paint so it's on there and then again get rid of as much of it as you can so there's a little bit left on there and then what we're going to do is we're just going to lightly touch it to the model and we dab 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 and then over time it will build up like a sort of speckly texture is that coming through uh, one moment. I'm just quickly going back. I'm a slightly delayed on you, remember, on the video. All oh, right. So, uh, yeah, I think it's starting, yeah, it's starting to come through quite nicely. Okay. So, I'm going to be quite subtle with this first one. And again, less is more. So, we can always build this up. But what this does is just gives a little bit of sort of subsurface rust sort of feel. And it helps break up any of like the big wide texture, uh, big wide open spaces. So, if we want to give this guy a bit of a rust patch on the top here, I can I can dab 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 till I'm happy with it, and now it looks like a rust patch. Pretty cool, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. the The best part about it is, it's it's strange in in the sense that you wouldn't think that this actually um, fits most of the machines you'd find in Horizon, but it's small details like this that really make things jump out and uh, really add a lot of contrast to it. So yeah. So again, think about what's What's this shell walker doing out in the wilds? The rain's going to be powering on the top. So mm. this, the top is going to be probably the most exposed uh, to weathering. So that will probably get the most rusty. 
the next bit will be anywhere where it's um, gonna like it's snippers or it's oh. kind of little whirring kind of saw blade um, and then around the joints of the legs and you can you know said it before we, you take a little bit of time with this and you can build this up until you're happy mm. Yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't have a really, really dirty trail walker that's been digging around through the mud or whatever else, for example. The, the crucial point, I think, is that for me, whenever I'm painting a model, is think about the story you're telling with the paint. Now, think about what, you know, exactly as you've just said, where is your shell walker being? Where is it going? That kind of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Oh, Matt, apparently, not only in Essex do shell walkers have inner arms, but apparently. Uh, apparently, if we Google it, the inner arms are blue. Oh, sweet. Okay. So, a um, complete immersion retained. Thank you, chat. Hooray for hooray for Essex crabs and uh, and yeah. all others. Although we have technically got it wrong, Amelia, I didn't want to correct you live on the stream. The uh, the saw blade, uh, although that is obviously a saw in Essex, and that's the shield walkers we are used to, is a shield and mirror, of course. Oh my! I beg your pardon. <laughs> it looks like a saw blade to me. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I remember those things from the game of Grim. All right. Um, also, featuring the board game quite quite um, uh, quite sorry, pro prominently. That's the word I was looking for. I'm quite happy with that level level of weathering. I do think with weathering, less is more. Otherwise, it, mm. it does end up being a bit too much. So get rid of that. Uh, right now, let's get. Um, this is a specialist paint. Um, so you're going to have to find this. This is a, a Vallejo paint. It's called Smoke um, mm. 70939. And what I like about this is um, it comes out quite thick and uh, let's put it in a gloopy. But when you dilute it, you can see it's actually got a load of particles in it. Can you see that? Mm. So if I just wash it up the side, you can see it's got like it's like kind of got coffee grounds in it. Oh. Well, these are perfect for like little kind of uh, rainy pockets. So I'm just going to again use capillary action to kind of let that soak in. This is uh, military modeling terms. This is like pin lining effectively. Oh. Uh, question. On top areas, and then uh, just just before I dive into the question, and then lightly with the brush, just pull it down. So you've got like a oh. little bit of kind of runoff coming down and it just gives a, a, a real sense of reality to it. Yeah, that's a lovely effect. That's really, really lovely. Cool, isn't it? It's um, dead easy. Yeah. I was I, sorry, I, I sort of paused halfway there. I realised you were uh, in full flow. That's fine. Uh, we don't have to leave for you, which is, um, is it better to paint the grey metallic parts or leave it with the spray? Um... Which bits in particular are we talking about? Uh, I've literally just got the grey metallic parts, so let's have a quick check. Uh, metallic uh, parts, so so you can use a metallic paint, of course. There yeah. are, um, every paint range will have um, metallic paints, so you can paint them. You will need to then put like a little bit of a wash over the top of them. Um, I've used the, um, uh, the contrast paint, the Black Templar, to oh. kind of um, give me a sense of, of metallic areas. Um, I think it's an interesting question. I um, mean, obviously, that's. I, I think it almost depends on what the rest of the model is doing. Sometimes it's easier to just sort of go for a raw kind of metallic, um, especially if you're new, because that, that way you get a real sort of sense of satisfaction. This is what it looks like. But if most of the other colors are quite pale on your model, it, it can look quite jarring to then have sort of very metal looking things. So it, it's down to the individual, I think, and what you're sort of content with. I think I, know uh, I think metal well look metallics are, are by far and away the easiest paints uh, to mm. paint so I would yeah. say if you're if you're new to painting um, I would I would definitely have a look at um, doing yeah. them in, in metallic I would echo that I think um, I know I found yeah after about 10 years I finally found a metallic effect I was happy with it took me a long while to get there and I actually just landed up using a whole bunch of metallic paints in different combinations to get it as well so yeah so this is a, a technique. Uh, so basically, you can see if you've been watching, this is my most concentrated dilution. Then I added a bit more water and then a bit more water still. So now I've got three different types. Um, and what I can do is, is, is basically pick up a little bit of this medium solution, 
give it a little bit of a, of a dab over these areas here. And then I can basically just smooth the, the edges out and leave a concentration around the, the speckle. And then if we blow on it, you can see that drying and it basically gives it, you see, like a subsurface kind mm. of rust sort of feel. Yeah, that's pretty smart. So I'm going to go quite liberal and quite heavy on these these joints here. I've managed to pick up a petty hair or something. Because <laughs> uh, this would definitely have, have weathered and worn and, and there'll be like splats and all sorts. So again, just over the tops of the knees. And it just, the brown really contrasts lovely with the, uh, with the white oh. as well. Um, and it, it adds that extra, th that, that sort of third color. Well, that's quite a cool technique that I, I use accidentally a lot. So uh, let's say you blob a bit on there and you're not completely happy with it. I've just whacked a load on there. Just whack it with your finger and your finger will kind of just pull it off and just soften it out a little bit. Yeah, never be afraid to do that. <laughs> never ever be afraid to do that. Oh, actually, someone raised a valid point. They really like this model, but unfortunately, we're going to chop it to pieces in days uh, when we actually fight it on the stream. Ha! Ah. Yeah, I think we're a touch away from a shell walker just yet. Uh, depends depends on our next draw of encounters, I guess. Yes, so. Shell, walk sh shell walkers are tough opponents thanks to that shield. So we feel bold. I mean, you say shield, I say saw blade. Yeah, exactly. I mean, depends if you yeah, depends if you encounter one downtown Essex or not. Yeah. The old Las Vegas uh, shell walkers are the worst. Yeah, the one, yeah, the ones from downtown Basildon are uh, officially the most lethal of all shell walkers. They come pre they come pre corrupted off the off the uh, production line. Right. So that's pretty much there. I mean, we could noodle with that for for ages. Um... I'm conscious of uh, keeping this to there or thereabouts an hour. So uh, let's grab the uh, last bit, which is uh, Agaros Dunes. Uh, actually, before that, what we're going to do... Are we going to do that? No, we'll do that afterwards. Um, is We'll grab a little bit of this. And we'll water it down a little bit. Load the brush up. And then we're just going to splodge this on. And what's key to this is to kind of mix uh, neat with watered down, and that just gives you um, like a sort of uh, a variety mm. feeling uh, of, of kind of density of color. And I'm just um, splodging on. I am focusing on making it darker directly underneath the crab. Gives oh. you a sort of pseudo shadow on the base. Which is pleasing, uh, <laughs> I guess. Probably doesn't make that much big of a difference, but I, I kind of know it's there. Hmm. It shows up. It works. And then uh, I'm just softening the edges with uh, a fairly dilute brush, kind of go around there. And again, because this is out in the uh, in the wastelands, it doesn't really matter so much. Also remember that you don't necessarily have to do all this in one pass as well. Um, obviously not, not for you, Matt, more for obviously people watching this as well. Yeah. Like it's, there's, there's no shame if you can't get any even coverage. Like leave the fin models to dry and then come back and do a little bit more. So I'm going to move this guy to one side. Uh, so And I'm going to show you the last little bit. So this is after it's dried, I've got a little bit of black and I just ran a black around the edge there. Uh, we go back to our trusty dry brush. Uh, we go to the, the yellow will do. Um, we're going to pick up a bit of yellow. What we're going to do is just come over this surface just to kind of catch a few edges, lighten it up a little bit. It just increases the uh, contrast. Yeah. Again, you can kind of take us long as you want on this I do like to catch the edge um, just so it contrasts nicely with the black mm. edge gives you a sense of like this is where the the model ends yeah I always I always um, 
just to soften that as well, I normally prefer to do like a dark brown rather than black around the edge because I find that it looks a little bit softer yeah. when you actually meet the two. Do you know what I think when I painted it, it's funny you mentioned that, when I painted that I squared a load of black on and I had some of the black and brown and I mm. think I just munched them together so it did, yeah, it actually mm. went down the Sherwin technique. And then uh, once it's all dry, uh, we go back to um, sealing it and we seal it with a dull finish. So the dull finish um, uh, flattens it down, uh, which is why I don't tend to paint with metallic paint because I always use a dull coat at the end. That protects your model from chipping. Um, it is a gaming piece. Uh, we are going to use this um, to, to, to play uh, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn with. and um, But it also, because it flattens the surface, um, it actually smooths out a lot of the transitions on the paint. So it actually ends up um, looking a lot more um, carefully constructed in terms of the transitions than perhaps it took you to do. And that, my friends, is uh, is pretty much how you paint a shell walker in just about an hour uh, from yeah. uh, from pretty much start to finish. Is there any questions that we haven't answered? I'm trying to quick look. Uh, I'm waiting for my chat box to load. I must, I must admit, I've been uh, zoomed in for a second just looking at the model. Uh, seen, uh, I can see that I can... Like how did you make the base seem like the terrain? All right, well, let's let's show you that. Um, uh, what I'm going to need is a sheet of paper, because this can be messy. This might blow the white balance a little bit. Uh, let me grab a, another mini from the box. What mini should we grab? Let's grab, let's grab a watcher, because I dare say we're going to need to paint some watchers at some point in time, aren't we? All right, so we'll grab a watcher. Let's just put the lid on, otherwise that might turn into a disaster with it being precarious. Uh, and then what I'm going to use is uh, some uh, super glue, uh, which I'm going to um, start waiting. This one's a bit of an old one. And or. I think my daughter might have got hold of this to stick her nails on with, which is why I have next to no oh super glue in, in my brand new pot. Let us stay there. All right. I'm, I'm also much feeling sorry for uh, her nails. They're going to be horrific when she actually tries to get them off. Honestly, like nothing is sacred in my house. Right, so I've got well, a as long as Teddy, as long as Teddy didn't eat, you're fine. Yeah. So I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to grab my model. I'm going to munch a bit of super glue on the uh, on the front of it. A little bit on the back. You can. Uh, I would definitely use PVA if uh, if I was mm. you, because uh, that is way more sensible than what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to grab the end of an old brush, and then I'm basically just going to smooth it out roughly. Uh, I'm not trying to be too complete in in the coverage. I'm trying to make some areas sort of thin and not thin. Um, I'm going to clean that off while I remember, otherwise that'll end up sticking to something and then that'll be a disaster. Right. And then a couple of years ago I had, um, my driveway was done and um, I managed to go out and nick some of the sand uh, and stick it in a bottle. Uh, and I, the reason I like this sand is because it's actually really fine textured sand. Oh. So um, you can get this from any builder's merchant. You can buy like a, a small bag will cost you a few quid and it'll last you for the rest of your life. And then I literally just tip it out of the bottle onto the base. Um, PVA is absolutely the right one to go for. And also the useful thing about PVA as well is when you come to actually flocking the model as well, if you want to do, you know, put some grass patches and stuff like that, yeah. then it obviously also dries clear, uh, which is nice and won't affect the colours of the rest of your rest of your model around it. I do find if you use PVA, uh, what you should then do is is wait until the bait until it's dried and then put mm. another really dilute PVA over the top and that mm. seals it down. Um, just let it sit for a minute or two. It kind of the the sand will soak up the super glue. You'll get more height interest, and then we just give it a light tap, and then that mm. gives you your base, which is what you see with the um, shell walker. So you you see why we mm. how we've got these different areas that we kind of capture, and then the reason why we put the paper down is we can uh, fold it neatly in one corner and then that gets tipped away back into the bottle waste not one not that's it All right dirt from the garden is good just be careful about some um 
You want kiln dried stuff ideally because uh, if it has moisture in it, it may well kind of react weirdly with the paint that you're using. Oh. Um, do, do, do. Secretly, Matt has painted three off camera. There's only two in a box, <laughs> but I do now have two <laughs> painted shell walkers, yo. Da, da, da. Pretty happy with those. Um, uh, we'll be happy if we actually meet two shell walkers on the trail. Uh, what else is there? Uh, all shell walkers have a British accent and wear top hats. Do like uh, that's canon now. Yeah, that that's that's definitely a conversion. Uh, any more World War Two tank painting techniques? You might as well put British flags <laughs> on the sides. <laughs> Don't tempt me. Um, yeah, de -de -de -de. that's great. Cool. Yeah. So, um, oh look, someone's put a uh, Wendy's put a link in for all your colours. That's cool. Mm. Someone's been using smoke wrong. Thanks for the tip. You're welcome. Smoke's wicked. You can use it in loads of different ways. Uh, it's really good on armor if you're painting like knights and you know warriors and stuff like that. Oh. Um, good. I think we've kind of. I wish I knew how to do hard white. I will try and do hard white. I tend to not do it because um, well, it's just easier not to do it. Um, hard white is, is a tricky, tricky color. Um, yeah, having having spent a long, long time perfecting how to do creams and whites, I think I can just about get there. But it takes a lot of practice. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, is that keeping a dry brush damp sums up 2020 so far <laughs> it's so counterproductive mm. but yeah um, uh, to be fair most dry brushing techniques in miniature painting is over brushing yeah fair oh. um, that's fair yeah an actual fact a lot of the ways that I was painting that mini you saw that I was likely just kind of catching the surface even though I had a lot of paint on my brush I wasn't trying to drown it mm. I think we've caught most of the questions yeah pretty straightforward um, one quick thing uh, that is really super intuitive but if you are super nervous about you painting your horizon models and you're not really a painter you haven't done it before just buy a box of miniatures you know from some from somewhere and just try practicing on those until you feel confident is yeah. the honest advice is the honest advice don't feel like you need to throw yourself at like doing watches or hunters or anything else Get yourself on uh, on eBay, buy buy like some second hand board games of some sort. There's usually hundreds of minis in in you know grab a yeah. grab a like a Seamon game or something like that. I mean, don't do it with the Steamforge games because our minis are too nice to uh, to do that with. Hmm. They're not there for practicing on. Um, cool, right? I'm just noodling now. Right, that is that. If there's any more questions, um, we'll happily answer them on. Wednesday, I think we're uh, we're playing a couple of couple more scenarios now, aren't we? Uh, Wednesday is when I'm going to see if I Nora is going to continue to get left in the dust by your car, or where we are going to catch up. Pretty sure I ended up with five glory to your one. Well, yeah, but you, it gets reset. You just got you have the current sun token, is all. Uh, it might get reset in your mind, but it's something that I will oh, never true. forget. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> right on that note uh, with the Kaja 4 glory to uh, uh, to your poultry one um, we will uh, press the stop button and um, see you guys on Wednesday yep